so I'm Cindy Briggs, and this is a California Poppies demonstration. I am going to put um, this on the big screen in just a minute after I get my supplies out, but I wanted to say hi to everyone. We've got 141 people so far, and we'll see what, what happens. This is a free event. I do one basically every quarter, and they're usually pretty simple. Last time we did um, hollyhocks, and maybe the time before that, I can't remember, we did Monument Valley. I, I just picked subjects that are kind of fun and teach you a range of things. Now, the California poppies are one of my favorite subjects, and we're just gonna get right into this. Let's mix some colors. You can use whatever colors you want. Here's pyro orange, which is actually nice and bright, but by itself is too much. I don't, I don't wanna just have the pyro orange. I wanna mix it with other colors. So let's see, this is pyro orange and my lemon yellow. And I actually like that a little bit better. I rarely use pyro orange by itself. I like to mix other colors with it. Um, pyro orange with my new gamboge gives me a little different orange. So see the difference? And but there's kind of a yellow in there. If I just mix a little more of my new gamboge with that, then I head towards the yellow, but it still has an orange tint. And so this, this is basically what I'm working with in my poppies. If I want, I could throw some red in there. I'll put that right there. And that's pretty too. So getting to know whatever colors you have is always good. And it took me, it took me a long time to figure out colors. This, I added some rose to the mix. So it's, it's just varying the color more than having the perfect color. I'm more about varying the color. The other thing is, the consistency of the color. What we want is something fairly transparent. So if I use my, okay, orange, since we're going with orange, if I wanna get a milk consistency, I'll, I'll play with it a little bit. This is a, an old Drex Sablet, size 10, just so you know. And notice my brush is on the side. I'm not doing this, I'm doing this. And that's why I like this palette. This is a yellow or a heritage palette. They're exactly the same, but the yellow is usually about half as much. Um, you want a milky consistency. And that kind of gives you a nice, medium value. If I add some water, note when I mix my water, I mix my brush at the top and then I drag it off the side because I don't want too much water in my brush. If I add more water, it's going to get lighter. And if I add even more water, it's gonna get even lighter. And if, if you just stay in this value range, you're gonna keep, have a nice transparent painting. What often happens is people get too thick with the paint and, and then you lose the transparency, herbal tea. That's extra light. 
So we're gonna we're gonna stay kind of in this range here. Um, I'm gonna do a quick, quick simple demo of wet on wet and wet on dry mixing. The paper I'm using for my quick sketch. Um, where is that? There we go. For quick sketch, I tend to like Fabriano. 140 pound paper and it's 25% cotton. It's just a little smoother than the 100% cotton. But my sketchbooks generally are not 100% cotton anyway. They tend to be 25%. And I'll show you a few of those as we go. So this is wet and wet. I'm gonna wet the poppy. And if you have too much water, you can pull it up and dry your brush a little bit. And then what I wanna do is just drop in various colors that I've mixed. Maybe here's some orange, some pyro, um, pyro orange, some new gamboge, uh, lemon yellow. What you're going for is a pretty mixed, a mingled color. And this is wet on wet right here. And wet on dry is, is the same in a way. You just work faster. So here's some of my new gamboge with the orange, maybe a little lemon yellow. I want some more orange. So if you have a, any orange, you know, they're fine. There we go. So there's a nice um, wet on dry. Let me write that down. Wet on dry and wet on wet. And that's basically where we're going with the paint. Today, we will use some greens. For my basic green, I have Green Appetite Genuine, and it's just a nice earthy green. And I'll do a little bit of that right here. That tends to go more towards the dark. And I have Thalo Yellow Green. So you probably have different greens than I do, but that's what I'm working with. And you can basically work with whatever you have. I can add some of the yellow to the green, let's see, and change it a little bit. I can add yellow or gold. Um, I'll just use my new gamboge to this green and change it. So whatever I'm painting, I'm thinking about varying the colors. Um, so there's our colors. You can pick whichever pen you want. When you paint green or orange, remember you're always varying the colors. And I'll remind you that of that when we get there. But what I did is I gathered a lot of my photos. This, these are actually from being there. And in a little different angle, this is a, a different grouping of flowers. I like giving you options when we do these. And this is the same thing. I just made it a little bit smaller so I can have it on the screen, hopefully. I used Daniel Smith watercolors. I lived in Seattle and I, I did a lot of workshops with Daniel Smith. And so I naturally gravitated towards those colors. What I really like about them is that they're consistent. You know, if you buy one tube and then buy another one a year later, it'll be the same color. And, and so I appreciate the consistency of color. I noticed my paper when I printed, it depends on the brightness of your paper and the, how thick it is to um, affect how vivid your colors are. This is a Canson sketchbook that I picked up at Dick Blick. And you can just, 
I think it's 25% cotton. I've gone through and I've done all my colors so I can see what I get. I love this for um, skin tones, mixing my roses with my yellows. And, you know, think about those poppies. Look at all the variety that I can get with my palette. And this is an old Arches sketchbook. They're harder to find. I just buy I buy all kinds of sketchbooks and you know you can glue things in. This is probably one of my older sketchbooks. I have a lot of things that were glued in because when I started I felt that oh whatever I put in the sketchbook has to be just right and so it was kind of hard for me to get going. Look at all these things that are glued in but this sketchbook is just for you. You don't have to put it in an art show. You can um, there, it's just for your notes. This I used Daniel Smith black watercolor ground, and then I mixed white in there to get this opaque look. And this one's layers of, okay, there's a poppy. This is one of my first quick sketches. It's 20 years old. And I did that in Venice. So you can just see, they're fun. This was actually one of my students in Provence who sketched that. And I just want you to see that your, your sketch can be a little wonky. Everything doesn't have to be straight. Anyway, you don't need to see every page. This is kind of fun where you put color down, let it dry, and then just draw on top of it. So that, that gives you a few ideas. This is Pentalock will come out. So I don't, don't go and buy one that isn't a sewn together or has a spiral. This is in, um, this is actually in Santa Barbara and around there. Um, I know it's fun to, oh, here's some poppies without using a pen, just drawing freehand. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed in this book because it fell apart. You can make your own. You can take a pad of paper and, and go have your paper bound. So you can pick any paper that you want. These are more finished than a quick sketch. Let me find, here's one from Camogli, Italy, that I was just by myself. So what, sometimes they're more simple and sometimes they're more involved. Uh, here's another one. Mowgli. And these are in, um, actually, the, this is mostly what my watercolors by the sea program is that you can draw just about anything. Okay, let's see. Here's the rotring. I think I'll use that one. Any pen that has a good line will work. You know, I picked all these different images. You can pick and choose your flowers. Sometimes it helps to pick from the same grouping because the light is the same. And I think I'm liking this one. I can't see everything in there, but see, you can pick and choose and move them around. This is actually the same as that. So I can pick from both of these. And what I'll do is go for the obvious one. And so I wanted to show you, here's, here's one with five. So you could do as many as you want. The key to continuous line drawing is to put your pen down, go for the, the simplest shape you can find. So I'm just drawing the outer edge of that poppy. I can redraw it as much as I want. Then I see this is kind of wavy, doesn't have to be just right. And I can come around. What I like to do is sort of let my line get a little organic. What's nice about these poppies is they don't have a real hard defined edge. I see, I like that shape. Then I can come in if I want and add a little bit more to it. And so now I've got a nice 
a simple poppy shape. Then, maybe I'll put another one. I like that one back in here. It doesn't have to be where it is in the photograph. You can move them around. I think I'll go for the whole outer shape. And I kind of let those run into each other. And then this part. And they'll turn out beautifully. There we go. I want this one to scoop down a little bit. So I don't have any problem with redrawing a line, adding some character to the line. I do want most of my stems to kind of go in the same direction. These are similar, but different. I like that one. See, I put them wherever I want. I'll put this here. Draw the outside shape. So whether I'm drawing um, Monument Valley or a house or a portrait, I do tend to look at the main obvious shape and then build from there. There we go. We got some nice poppies developing. Really like that one. I'm going to tuck one behind. So I said, you don't need to draw in advance for this because you're sort of making it up as you go. And the reason I'm not putting in all my stems is because I want to be able to put my poppies wherever I decide they need to go. Can you say what kind of pen you're using? Um, this one, so let me, uh, Carla sent this to me. It's a Rotary Tiki graphic. Um, I often use the Faber Castell Pit artist pen. I've been using these for about, I don't know, 20 years. And they're really good. Thank um, you. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. It's like putting together my own bouquet. And I want it to go behind this one. Cindy, this is kind of scary doing something in pen when I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is gonna give you a breakthrough because you- okay. You accept your lines, and by ke keeping your pen down most of the time, as you do this, what you get is a more organic line. And it, it doesn't often turn out just so at the beginning, but the more you practice this, the better your drawing will be. I learned this in um, kind of college forever ago. And what's so nice about it, it kind of shifts you into your right brain once you can relax. But don't feel you're the only one feeling that way because a lot of people are intimidated a little bit by the pen. Cindy, I missed the beginning. I wanted to know that travel set there that you have of watercolors. What um, watercolor oh. set is that? Oh, this I use for everything. Every, everything, it's a, um, and I'll be sending out my supply list. This is the um, M-I-E, J, I should type it in, Magello, M-I-E-J-E-L-L-O, or Heritage palette. It's the same palette. I think one just has the Japanese name and one has kind of the American name. And the heritage is always more expensive. But I use this for everything, for my portraits and my landscapes, for my travels. And it's 
you know, it's a good size. It's not too big and it's not too small. And main thing I like about this palette is I can get my brush in sideways and roll in the color. Because those little teeny tiny palettes, all you can do is get the tip in there. So good question. Okay, oh, I like that one. That one turned out okay. They, they all kind of go in different directions. This one's pretty. And it's good to have an odd number. So if I'm, if I'm going to do two more, so five now, these two are kind of similar. I'm gonna add more to that. See, I can just design my poppies. Maybe I'll do a smaller one right here. I like that one. Yeah, almost in every one of my programs, I do teach the contour line drawings with a pen to get you used to um, sketching. And I found that over time, you just build your confidence, and especially in your sketchbook, because it's a sketchbook and you'll go a lot faster. Did I add a comment about the contour drawing? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so when I was a sophomore in high school, I, I, I took art, which was my last art class. So decades ago, and we had to spend so much time doing blind contours where we mm. couldn't even look at the paper. You just, mm -hmm. you know, put the pen down and you keep moving it. You never pick up. And I hated it. And here I am decades later, yeah. trying to revisit my interest in art, trying to actively improve. And I'm voluntarily doing blind contours to help me on that journey. So I just wanted to share that with other people. If they're kind of going, oh, you know, if they have anxiety or just sort of misgivings about it, it um, what Cindy is saying is absolutely true. And it, it works. It helps you get better. It does. And we we resist it, but you do. You get faster and you you learn to trust your lines. They can be really beautiful. I'm gonna put a few um, pods in here because they're always fun to add. Maybe I'll tuck one in behind this. Once again, you can put these wherever you want. And number, odd numbers. So I'm gonna, There we go. Now I've got five. I can put my stems in and I can suggest just with scribbles, those um, leaves. Not trying to, to do anything precise at all with those. You'll find you have your own style that will come through over time. And that's always exciting to see. I celebrate that. Well, I think I'll put some more leaf. See, it's scribbly. I am keeping my pen down as I scribble in some of these. That's probably my favorite. You're always going to have a favorite when you're sketching. I really recommend that you travel or when you can, whether you travel, you know, nearby or go out of town, it's always fun to have a sketchbook and write about your journey, sketch in there. That's how you develop your eye for things. And you really build your drawing skills. What I, oops, that's not really straight, but that's okay. Uh, I went to Sitka and I took a sketchbook and a pen. I said, all I'm gonna do is use my pen. And after that, that's pretty much what I did when I traveled most of the time especially when I'm by myself, I'll use a pen. 
what I found is I draw faster and I can get even more precise over time. But And I've been drawing my whole life. So it just takes a while to build that skill. I feel like I need something over here. I'll put another bud. It's a funny looking one. Yeah, you can draw color, draw back through there. And remember I said, if you only have one or three or five, any, any odd number, because I just made an extra that, but we're still good. I kind of want something over here, but it's okay. You know, I want something over here. I can't help it. There's so much going on, but the painting, believe it or not, just takes a moment. I'm going to tuck one more in there because I want to. There we go. Just felt like it needed something over here. That's better. This one needs a stem. So I've got a lot going on. You may have one, whatever you decide. And then I've got my colors over here. And I can just, you know, you can do wet on dry or wet on wet. Just let those colors mingle. Um, new gamboge and orange. First, I picked one of the biggest main flowers. I can drop in yellow. I don't even need to look at my photographs because I'm, I'm not worried about trying to match it. I just want to get those fun, colorful shapes in there. So that was wet on dry. I'm kind of fill in those gaps. There we go. This one I'll paint wet on wet. So glad so many of you made it. Okay, and I bring the color of the stem down, flower down into the stem. So you can decide wet on wet or wet on dry. This will be wet on dry. You know, and I, I grabbed a little red. The goal is to make each one a little different. We're still in the same color family. What's nice about Quick Sketch is you don't have to do every detail. You can just capture the general idea and keep it nice and loose and fun. I do have, um, my husband's like, well, tell him what you have. A Quick Sketch program online. I am doing quick sketch this year with the Smithsonian also and with terracotta and in Spain when I go to Spain next month. And then next year we're going to Pasadena, California and doing wet and wet and the south of France where we go do this on location. And if you look in my YouTube, you'll find plenty of pre-themes. So I just have a little bit for everybody. Okay, wet on wet. That color is too much all the same. So what happens if I bring in my rose? Experiment a little bit. It's They still all say orange. I can explore my rose. Um, I can try Cranaphidone Gold. The orange, New Gamboge, whatever yellows you have, give them 
give them a try. Now I like that one. Let's see, and I'm gonna bring some of that color down. I see a lot of red on that side. So I'm gonna try wet on wet. And bring that right there. This side is more orange, some yellow, and then I see quite a bit of red right in here. So I can grab some of my cadmium red and get really bright on that side. That was wet on wet. Now some of these will dry back and you'll be like, oh, they're not bright enough. You can always add more color after it dries. The key thing when painting watercolor is get in and get out. Don't fuss with it too much. I think I need to get out of that one already. That's kind of exciting right there. I have so much red on one side. I kind of need to balance a little bit over here. This one's got more orange. So I'll go back to my lemon yellow and my orange, um, pyro orange. And I think I mentioned earlier that I'm not that super particular about orange. I think this is one that Alvaro used. So I thought, oh, I'm going to paint like Alvaro casting that. So because I was so whatever with my oranges. So I picked that one and he uses it actually quite a bit on faces in his paintings. I like it as, as a color to add to. I rarely use it straight on, but that, that was pretty straight. I'm going to add, oh, some yellow right there. Cindy, excuse me, in these quick, quick set, touches, how do you decide when to do wet on wet and wet on dry? Um, just follow your heart. Uh, usually I'll do wet on wet on a sky. I rarely do wet on wet in my sketchbook because then it takes longer to dry. But for these little flowers, it works. You know, little space. If I wet the whole page, I'd be sitting there half the day. But small areas like this one will dry pretty quickly. That's a great question. Yeah, it varies all the time. Let's see, red and orange. Ooh, that's exciting. So this one's wet on wet. And see, with wet on wet, the water, the color just oozes. When I would say when I started painting, I did a lot of wet on wet because I like the effect of the color um, moving in there and not having all hard edges. Part of that was because I wasn't fast enough to um, paint wet on dry and get it to mingle. So you kind of develop a speed or a timing as you paint. And you may do more wet and wet areas when you're starting and then gra gradually work towards wet on dry because you're fast. You can go fast and get the same effect. Yeah, there's some variation in there. You're asking great questions. This is working. I'll go ahead and do a little bit of the green. Now you could do a painting that is spot color. Ooh. Um, you could do the whole drawing and just paint one poppy. You know, if that's all the time you have. And, and that can be really fun. Oh, I'm glad you're seeing on the screen. Um, this is my Provence sketchbook. I lived out in El Sur Le Sur. And I, I just want to let you have you let go of trying to do every page filled in all the way. This. This was in Avignon and I just had time to sketch and it had a little bit of color. Well, this one's fun too. I love 
the Roussillon houses and and all these different villages that I went went to. And I'm just using pen. This is kind of spot color. You see where you, you don't have to paint everything. Just paint bits of it and it can create a beautiful journal page. And I love painting vignettes of, of things. Um, Il Sur Le Sorg is a, a market village and it's really fun too. I was really happy to be there for almost four months. Cindy, this is Eva. Yes. Uh, what glue do you use for um, uh, gluing the into the uh, journals? Oh, okay. So I usually take tape with me when I'm traveling. And then when I get home, I use Yes Glue, Y-E-S. It's more mm -hmm. of a paste. Okay. Yeah, something more sturdy than a glue stick. Um, okay. Yeah, good question. This is my green um, appetite, and I like to add cronacridone gold to that, and my phthalo yellow green. And once again, I just want you to let your paintbrush dance around, and you know you could bring in other colors. So, for instance, this cobalt teal blue. I could use a little bit of that. And, and always, always vary your colors. And what's nice, you don't have to feel like you have to fill in every detail. Isn't that fun? Now you work so hard on those flowers and then you just get to play a little bit. If you miss a stem, just put it in. You can always come back and add more lines later. I don't care if I stay in the lines for this part because when you see these poppies, they're wild and just growing um, almost like, I don't wanna say like weeds, but they do. They just kind of grow wild. They're wild flowers. That's better to say. Oh, I, could, I could bring in Lavender, if I want. Let's see, or blue. I'll bring in a little bit of my lavender. Lavender is one of my favorite colors for um, shadows, putting in shadows. Do it quickly, don't overdo it. So if, if you were sitting at the botanical gardens, you could sit there and do something like this, or even if like three flowers, sometimes fewer is better. Oh, I need to have some of my turquoise over there. Do I have a theme in each of my sketchbooks? My sketchbooks are from my travels, so I'm just painting what I see when I'm there. So it's not it's, it's sort of a mix of experiences when I'm out there. That's a great question. Okay, these are dry. I'm going to add just a little bit more color because my goal is to finish this in the hour. You, you don't have to look at the pictures. You can kind of follow them if you want. What I like to do is vary the values in some of the shapes. So, for instance, this one, and this this is kind of just a design approach where I I might skip a petal here and there, and just give it a little bit more depth of shape. Thanks. Is it important to change the water? You know, my buckets are so big, and since I rinse at the top, the water at the top stays cleaner. If you put your brush all at the bottom, down at the bottom, that's where the mud is. So it's something like this. I mean, I rarely change my water. I can go all day, um, depending on the painting. If I had painted the greens first and I wanted really clean yellows, 
I may want to change my water because then my water's got some green in it. But for, for what we're doing in such a small area, we can get away with quite a bit. Great questions. I've been painting huh, most of my life. I grew up with a family of women artists. So my great grandmother painted and my aunt, my grandmother. I taught my mom how to paint. It's almost a family tradition to teach painting. There we go. See how I can just pick and choose a petal here and there. I've developed some um, depth. So I hope that you get out of this. Yes, I can sketch and paint on location. You know, I can do this and you will, you will just get better the more you do it. And you will get my newsletter. So you'll hear about some things that are coming up. Yes, I love that one. And each of these, as I put an extra color in, I may leave that one alone. You know, you decide where you want to add another layer of color. If we were doing tight versions of these, we may get really involved in the light and shadow. But with this kind of painting, you just want to capture the impression of your flowers. There we go. I'm going to go darker on this outside and keep that light wash on the inside. And now they have a little more oomph when they dry back. I want to even get a little more intense right there. So you're the designer of your flowers. Yeah. How do you add those extra colors on top of it after it's dried so you don't get hard lines? Well, I'm actually putting those colors within the shapes. Do you see that? So the lines are already there. One thing, make sure it's completely dry before you do it. And one way to avoid getting hard lines is blending. And I'll do a little blending on this because we can all use that. So if you put paint down, often you'll have a hard edge on one side, but by getting your brush wet, lose some of that water, you can blend it out while it's still wet and lose that hard line. Or if you wait for it to dry, you can use a thirsty brush and soften an edge. Yeah. Like right here, I went out of the line, which I don't mind. If you wait till it dries, and I just spent quite a bit of time on another painting where I did a lot of edge softening. I'll show it to you. So you can lift it back up off the paper. And often we do end up, I did brush through that one. You do end up with a hard line, maybe that you don't want. Oh, well, let's see, that's hard. It doesn't bother me, but see, I can come in once it dries with a damp brush and I can soften a line. This one, it's just a small painting that I had to come back in and soften all over the place because I didn't want hard lines everywhere. And I still may do a little bit more of that. But in the sketchbook, I don't worry about hard lines. Mm -hmm. Splattering, oops, it's at the top of the hour. We'll do just a couple more seconds of um, splattering is totally optional. I, I like doing this sometimes in my sketchbook. It just suggests that it's loose loose and free and happy. If you splatter and you get a spot where you don't want it, you can just dab it up right away. Or you can cover up areas. And I'll show you one more thing. 
because I sent this out. And then we're going to do a group picture with whoever's here so we can hold them up. But I sent you the um, typography. And sometimes I want to add lettering to a page while I'm there. Sometimes when I get home, I'm like, oh, I can add typography to my page. And this is a crafty mint light box. It's really handy for um, if you are in one of my classes, I often send a drawing if it's not a quick sketch. And you can trace my drawing, but I highly recommend this version. And the main thing is because this is attached. If you, so if I put that down, I could pick from any of these. And what I want you to see is I can see through the paper. So if I turned out, what I often do is turn out all my lights and then I can really see through. So you can do that with a sunny window, a light box. This is how I did it before. Just put it in and then trace the outer edge of the letters and fill it in with color or do it freehand. But this, this is really handy to have as an artist. So here is my original, which I did on location. And I probably, you know, I filled in, actually I filled in a little bit more, but see how squiggly my leaves are. And I put in more of these, super fun. This one's a little bigger and looser and actually more colorful with the reds and the oranges. Quinacridone Rose, my supply list I'll send out in my newsletter. You'll get a copy of that with all of these colors, which most of them are pretty traditional, but some of them are unique to um, more unique, like the lavender and the cobalt teal blue. Naples yellow, love those colors. Green Appetite Genuine. What type of easel? Um, I have a video on YouTube that I use a Plain Hair Pro easel uh, is what I take when I'm teaching. If I'm not teaching, I don't even take it because I'm just as happy to paint on my lap. Okay, let's um, do a group picture. Hold up. Oh, look at all this. And I've got another page of you. We're going to do two. I've got two pages. Three. Ready? Those are gorgeous. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Now I've got Julie and Pearl and some of you. So I'm going to do another one. We've got three pages. Copies. And I've got one more page. Isn't this fun? Marlene and Patricia and Belle and Cheryl. Jeez. Okay, so we did that in about an hour. And what I like to do is just spotlight some of you. Yes. We're going to do some quick spotlights. So if you hold your painting up wherever I am, I'm just going to quickly spotlight whoever I can. Awesome. Rachel, great painting. Thank you. Thanks. Lots of fun. And Alice, ooh, nice. Alice. I go back and forth, gorgeous colors. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's so you, Marie. Colleen. Gorgeous. Oh, so fun. I love your designs. Now, isn't it great that you drew it yourself? You designed your own grouping. Beautiful, Marianne. Thank you. Lovely. Lovely. And Brenda. Aren't you great? Beautiful colors, everyone. Gorgeous. Love your yellow blending into your orange and fun. Oh, look at those. It just is happy. Gina does great things. She's in a lot of my programs. 
Oh, nice. Nice and fresh. Here's Robin. There we go. Ooh, pretty. Confident colors. Yes, I can. Oh, I like your dark centers. And your your um, vignette edges. Oh, gorgeous colors. Look at what you did. Oh, nice. They're all fabulous. I can't wait to share these in my newsletter. Ooh, Marlene, nice. Yeah, these are great because they're so organic and fresh. You, oh, and you put the lettering in. Isn't that nice? Thanks for joining us today, Eva. Thank you, Cindy. Um, Sandy, oh, those are gorgeous. Look at that fresh, intense color and wet and wet, wet and dry. That's exciting. Here's Marlene. Gorgeous Marlene. Beautiful colors. What I'm loving is everyone has a variety of color. You just didn't do orange. That's wonderful, Paula. And oh, really nice in your sketchbook too. Beautiful texture on your leaves. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, I love that you put your colors on the side. Great. Yes. Yeah. It's L Lorraine, and I can't get my camera to work, but I want to tell you that the uh, piece that I painted in your Burano Reflections workshop. Yes. Today is an absolute favorite artwork, and everybody who sees it, who's and ahs. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you for a wonderful class. Thank you for mentioning that. We all have favorites. I love the Janine's flowers with her color notes on the side. That's a great thing to do. In fact, I did that for years when I started because I could not remember my colors. So great idea, Janine. There, Pearl's been painting in her sketchbook. Is that the Edger sketchbook? Yes. It is. Yeah, you... and it is bound. Yes. I just got one. That oh, I love okay. the format of that. Yeah. A little hard to lift sometimes. Is it? Yeah, but it's a sketchbook. Yeah. You know. Um, that's beautiful. Thank you for coming. I'm gonna put copies here. Oh, good. I want to post it when you finish so we can see. Okay. Thanks, Pearl. Yes. Debbie. Lovely shapes, lovely colors. There's a softness to this that is just calming. You know, some people go really intense with their colors. I think yours is soft and just peaceful. There's something very peaceful about it. Thank you, Debbie. This is a really good example of how you can give so many people like the same materials in the same directions and every single one is different. Thank you for mentioning that because that's how I try to teach is have people do a little bit of their own thing. Lovely. Thank you. Really lovely colors. Yours is very calm and peaceful too. I'm gonna fill it in more. It seems like there's a lot of empty space. Well, you know, you only had an hour. Yeah. And actually, it came down to about 40 minutes. And I think you do get inspired by seeing the other artists mm -hmm. and what they do. Well, thank you. Oh, I love your page design. Look at that. I love how you brought the word in and used the panorama shape. You could put more right. on the other side. If you wanted to. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah. Or just one, you know, just really get into one on the other side. That could be gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Rhoda. Thank you. That's fun. Thank you. DC, great colors. Did you enjoy that one? Good. Good. Love your colors. 
such a great design too. I'm glad you picked you picked and chose your own. Yes, you get to see a variety of designs and a variety of styles. This is gorgeous. It's Love a it. Now. It is. I like that you went um, vertical. <laughs> yes, because they are vertical flowers. It really works. And your darks, I love those intense darks in there. And you brought some of the greens into the flowers. Really great style and approach. Love it, Eva. Oh, fun design. Did Thank you, you. Did you enjoy picking your own flowers to paint? Yes, and I really enjoyed the challenge of doing the, the permanent <laughs> ink. And then I, I even made a mistake. I didn't want my stem to go over this flower. So I just ignored it and painted over it. That's and it's right. fine. <laughs> it is. You know, I like your peach on the buds. I wish I would have done that. But which poppy is your favorite? Oh, man. Uh, that's a that's a good yeah. question. I, I like all of them. Good. Okay. <laughs> Gwen's beautiful colors and design. Did you enjoy working with a pen? Yes, yes, I did. Oh, good. This is my first time working with a pen. Wow. Look at what you did. I know. I it. It's like a breakthrough. Yeah. You now you just accept it. Look what you can do in a short amount of time. Beautiful puppy. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, gorgeous. That makes me happy. Well, what makes me happy is you, the first time I ever picked up a pen to draw <laughs> without a pencil or an eraser was with your class. I think it was in May. And I've been trying to do more of it and embracing the art of imperfection. So absolutely, um, thank well, you for that. It's freeing, isn't it? It is. It really is. It's a lot of fun too. And you get it, something done very quickly. And, mm -hmm. and I love seeing what everybody else has done too. Really good ideas. They so are. I wish, I wish I could put them all on, on one wall because it's like a garden of poppies. Mm -hmm. They're so beautiful. And your drawing's great. You're doing great with the pen. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I like your style. Thank you. I'm also trying to just embrace the imperfection. And every time I do a quick sketch with you, I feel better with it. So I'm I'm loving it. It's it's good for me to not be concerned about perfection. Oh, good. Isn't that a life lesson? Yes. <laughs> It really is. Your design is so cool. I love your shapes and well, your colors. You. It's really exciting. Thank you. you. Know, great sense of design. Thanks, April. I mean, every one of these is is full of joy. Are you feeling that? There's Anna. Oh, look at that one. It's like your nice. arms out. Your you're dancing in poppies. Oh, thank you. I, it was really challenging for me, the same um, the other ladies were saying, to just do it, because usually I'm a little bit more of a perfectionist, but I really appreciated just doing it with the pen first, uh -huh. and then um, it just going with it. Oh, and look at what you did. Thank that, you so much. That is gorgeous. Thank you, April. I mean, Anna, and it looks like you've got some little ones back there. Yes, it's my daughter. She loves painting, too. How awesome. Hi. You can do this. You're awesome. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Because I, I think you get a lot out of seeing all these different versions. Ooh, pretty colors and gorgeous shapes. I like the vignette. You really thought too about your design and your um, little um, flower, what are they? Not bulbs, um, uh, buds. I uh, lose my words when I'm teaching. Buds, gorgeous. This makes me wanna do it again. Thanks, Jenny. So every 
the flower is uniquely shaped and I'm glad we, we did that, that we venture around and your colors are wonderful, Judy. Susan, there she is and you're muted right now. So we can't hear what you're saying, but we love your flowers. I Oh, nice notes on there. I love notes on the page and your shapes are great. You're muted. We can't hear you. I, this is my first time. Oh, yay. <laughs> it was just fun. I enjoyed it very much. Good. Well, it you jumped fun. right in. <laughs> it, oh, I, but I'm inspired by so many of the others. I, that's, I think that's an important part of class. Yes. And seeing everybody's work and celebrating what you did. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Susan. Oh, Julianne, really nice design in there. Oh, thank you. I enjoyed doing it so much. I can feel that. <laughs> I can feel that. You've got one bud flying in the middle. So just bring the stem down behind the flower. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the only thing I'd say because it's lovely. Absolutely lovely. Thank you for sharing, Julianne. Thank you. Oh, nice design. Look at your colors. Very fresh. Very fresh. It's gorgeous. I can celebrate every one of these because I know you just went for it. Oh, a nice line work. I like your extra lines in that that star poppy right in front yeah. and how you filled in with some of the greens you've got that blue in there really nice i hope that you continue to do this it was fun good not good. feeling well today so this was a, a nice distraction <sighs> oh, <laughs> you feel better thank you yeah, you take care and get better. I know when my daughter went to kindergarten, <laughs> it was so determined to paint on the first day of school. And I, I literally got the flu. So I was laying in bed painting, you know? I was like, I'm going to paint no matter what. And I remember I felt awful that there's something about painting it takes your mind away from, from thing, you know, when you don't feel good or maybe yes, you're exactly. hurting or you need a break from life, painting is a really beautiful thing to do with your time. I'll put my screen back up. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Thank you for sharing your paintings and your time with me today. Um, watch for my newsletter. I just opened up a um, quick sketch I've been keeping open and um, I think Watercolors by the Sea is open and all my vault classes are coming out. But if all you can do is join me for these free quick sketches, I'm super happy to have you. So take care and enjoy the rest of your August. Can you believe it? It's almost September. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Take care. Thank you, Cindy. Happy Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. It's kind of a joy. Kathleen, Paula, Robin, Marie. Thank you very much. Janice, Joy. Thank you. It was my first time, and I will definitely Thank do this you. again. I'm still working on it. Okay. I'm glad you can make it. We've got to Thank start you. somewhere, and this is an easy way to start with quick sketch. It's just sort of fun. Great. Marie, good. You're still here. I did get your emails. <laughs> we got you in, though. I'm glad you figured it out. Um, Camille, Lee, Ellen, Jean, Caroline, Peg, Irene, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>